I'm Sarah Lawton, and I serve a church in Minneapolis. And uh, it's a, I guess, a deep question why I'm, <laughs> why I'm here. I'm here because I know people and I have friends. Mm -hmm. um, but they, they recognized in me and. The, my life is working in me to uh, break open my heart, mm -hmm. I think. Um, thinking about my ecological consciousness, it's um, my love for the planet feels like grief most days. Mm -hmm. my, and it's um, such a presence in my life that there's I, there's very few other things that I can think about uh, mm -hmm. or that I find the connection of um, the connections so intact and so deep in, in this world that I, I there's really nothing else that I think is important um, I have dogs and I walk my dogs every day and so I, I spend regular time outside mm -hmm. And uh, I get to see favorite places and see them transform and see them also degrade, uh, but simply with garbage or pollution. Mm -hmm. um, one day I was at the Mississippi River and there was a, this place where people fish. And so there's oftentimes, um, there's garbage. People have lunch there and leave, and leave sometimes leave their stuff and you can sit at the river and you can see um, garbage or crocs or mm -hmm. you know flip flops float through the <laughs> river. Yeah. And there's a fish, a tadpole in a plastic bag, and I tried to open. I tried to release the tadpole and put the tadpole in the water, and I didn't realize that I was holding the wrong end. <laughs> and the tadpole couldn't get out of the bag and the <laughs> tadpole died oh. in, right in front of me and, um, and it, I was trying so hard to do the right thing not realizing that I had no idea what I was doing <laughs> and I just I flopped <laughs> and wept yeah. and um, in the midst of all this garbage and the world the, felt like it soaked up my grief, and um, like a like a mother soaks up or nurtures it. Mm -hmm. I have such a personality that um, there are a lot of energy, and the only way to recharge is kind is like sit in the sun mm -hmm. <laughs> and soak up the solar power. <laughs> uh, but I'm here because people recognize in me. Uh, passion that um, and then helps funnel me. So I'm here because we it's the most important thing that I know and the only thing I want to talk about. <laughs> um, but here, being here, I get um, there's help and benefit in strategizing and learning plans and making networks and meeting people. So again, I think people are always drawing out in me things that I things that the world that we, need, that we need it's good good time yeah so what what would you say would be the formative influences that made you a earth centered kind of person yeah an earth keeper yes um, I think probably being uh, being a being a pastor, actually, um, we what, my church is an environmentally sustainable, spiritually fulfilling, and socially just community of faith, and uh, we've grown and built of our churchyard a garden, mm -hmm. and this garden has transformed my life and brought the garden out of us, hmm. out of us as a church, and um, and I think I've like compassion and care like I have had dogs and animals and thought and and thought about these things for a long time but my my focus is sharpened and by being a pastor and thinking of and letting the, the church show me what it needed <laughs> so I think being part of this community garden being part of a church that has uh, environmental sustainability at a 
its heart. But that just trying to live into has completely changed my life from the inside out. Hmm. So, has anything happened to your um, international world consciousness as um, you know, as you know, you got this centeredness in the earth? You know the immediate surroundings. Um, you know, heard you talking at the breakfast table this morning about, you know, politics and things like that. So, and, and to me, it's like it's really expanded the notion of who is who is my neighbor. You know, the fact that we can do such technological, wide-reaching uh, things that affect you know people that we don't even see. It's a um, it's a closed loop, you know, and mm -hmm. I've been talking a lot, learning a little bit about the Pacific Garbage Patch, and um, a, there's a plot in the it's a space in the ocean twice the size of the state of Texas that's garbage, just oh, yeah. floating in, in yeah. the ocean, yeah. and you see the images and pictures of that, and um, it's my garbage. It, yeah. It's not. There's nothing in there that I can say. Oh, that's not mine. I, mm -hmm. I don't. I'm not responsible for any of that. Somebody else must have done that, because it. it I can see my water bottle. I can see <laughs> my toothbrush, my shoes, my dog. I can see my stuff in the garbage. And to know that that somebody else is um, that touches somebody else's land. It. Mm -hmm. it um, it's my purchases that makes it that is impacting other people. Um, one woman mentioned, she's from the Philippines here, and she mentioned mul that multiple corporations in her land are aggressively developing and destroying her homeland. And those are yeah. the places, oh, I buy those products. Yeah. Um, it's not, we are the body. Yeah. So what would you like to see down the road come out of Earth Keepers? Mm -hmm. That we, uh, that the church recognizes the heart of the gospel is in this on this planet in our on our home in that we're on this home this is our home god mm -hmm. lives here god wants us to be here god wants us to live together um that care for the for creation is the heart of the gospel and that a transformed life uh, a life that is more sustainable that is more peaceful that is connected and organic and healthy and free that that's what we want for um, for all of our people, for people in our church and for the whole planet. And I think a changed, a transformed heart, a transformed life happens. It can happen. I think. I hope. I don't know. I'd like to think that it happens in church, but maybe not. <laughs> the church. That this is what why the church is here. Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah. Anytime. Thank you.